Hello, welcome to the Yarn on Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy to have you here, keeping me company as I waffle on about my adventures in knitting, spinning, crochet, sometimes weaving, though not weaving for a while. Naughty me. <laughs> there aren't enough hours in the day, are there? And just as I sit down to record, the heavens have opened. So I apologise if you can hear the rain in the background and that's distracting in any way. I hope not. But this is the time that I have managed to set aside to do record today. So we're just going to go with it. <laughs> For today's video, I'm going to be chatting about all of the things that I worked on during the month of February. I have some knitting, some spinning and some crochet to share with you. Um, before I get into that, um, I just want to hijack the beginning of this video for a couple of quick asides. The first one is I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has reached out to me since I posted my um, socks for um, West Midlands Ambulance Service video, which I popped up a couple of days ago. Um, in that video, um, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up on the screen. Um, I mentioned that I'm helping to um, make some socks for an appeal that um, the lovely Jeanette who is a wonderful part of our Yarn and Yarns community um, she is the moderator in our Ravelry group and um, Jeanette's daughter is training as a paramedic for the West Midlands Ambulance Service and they were chatting about how much um, Jeanette's daughter likes to wear knitted socks and that, um, they came up with the idea between them that um, they would try to launch an appeal to gift the staff at the hub that um, Jeanette's daughter works at um, a pair of socks each um, in December so for Christmas time and uh, we thought we were aiming for around about 500 pairs of socks but Jeanette's um, contacted me this week to say the number is more like 425 pairs of socks so slightly less than we thought but still a huge undertaking um, but I posted a video chatting about how you could um, get involved and help um, by donating sock yarn by making socks um, to help us try to help us to um, try and help Jeanette reach that target and lots of people have already reached out to me um, have donated sock yarn and um, have messaged me to say they're going to send packages with socks um, or with sock yarn in so I am so so um, appreciative of um, everyone who has contacted me um, I think that the Yarn and Yarns community as a whole will be contributing quite some number of pairs of socks for that appeal, which I am so excited for. So thank you so much um, to everyone who has um, already committed to help with that appeal. The second thing that I wanted to briefly mention, um, I usually try to keep um, my shop talk away from the um, other content that I post here on the channel um, but on Monday I popped up a shop talk video for anyone who doesn't know I run a small yarn shop in South Wales where I live um, and on Monday I popped up a video launching some new products or new for me products in the shop I had these um, lovely knitting notebooks um, which sold out really quickly I only had a few um, but I know there were lots of people who were interested and missed out and I just wanted to let you know that my supplier for these um, has delivered me another box today and so I've got many more of these in stock for anyone who was interested. Um, for anyone who didn't see the video um, they're just a really sweet um, little notebook with these gorgeous sheep in sweaters on the cover and inside the, night, the notebook um, there is a sort of combination of lined pages and graph pages. Um, they're a really lovely size, there's about 50 pages in here so um, plenty of room for all of your project notes um, but also a nice size for you to either slip into your project bags or just have on the table or on the chair next to you while you work um, and they're only a few pounds each so um, I just wanted to do let anyone know who missed out on those on Monday um, that there's plenty more back in the shop. Um, as of now. Right, um, with those announcements aside, I can get stuck into chatting about what I have been making throughout the month of February. Um, you may have watched my February making plans video. Um, if you didn't and you want to go and check that out, I'll put a link up above. Um, but I was having a bit of a decision paralysis, so I employed the help of my trusty dice and a few prompt cards to help me pick the projects that I worked on throughout February um, and that served me really well actually. Um, I managed to work I think on um, everything that I pulled out as prompts for my making and a couple of other things besides. <laughs> um, so 
first off the projects that I picked as um, something to work on on a daily basis if you've been watching my videos this year you'll know that um, because I have a lot of works in progress on the go at once I've been trying to concentrate my energy on working on um, one or two of those projects on a daily basis um, rather than flitting through sort of 10 projects in a week trying to concentrate on just one or two each week um, to try and make some good progress on the things that I am working on rather than not a lot of progress on everything if that makes sense and that's been serving me really well this year um, and so when I rolled the dice for that prompt um, the dice told me to work on my oldest project <laughs> which was in fact the project that I was least looking forward to working on um, but I did in fact work on it um, I managed to work on this project for two weeks of the four weeks in February um, so the project in question is my Latvian mitts and these have not been seen on the channel aside from um, that making plans video for quite some time um, this was a lovely kit that was gifted to me by my dear friend um, Gemma after she went on a trip to Latvia um, and she came back with this mitten kit for me and this has been languishing for quite some time because the mittens are knit at a really tight gauge um, it's um, two millimeter needles they're worked on and most of the rows have four colors in each row um, so tight gauge and really slow progress um, just had me quite frustrated with working on this project so it went in the box and didn't see the light of day for ages um, but I'm happy to say um, that after two weeks of um, working on these every day I have made a reasonable amount of progress um, now you might think that in two weeks you could probably whip up a pair of mittens and I think any other pair of mittens that would be the case for but I have not even finished one mitten <laughs> and I did believe me I did work on these every day for two weeks it's just really slow going um, at such a tight gauge and with so many colors but I shall show you what I've done um, so I think when I picked these up at the beginning of February I was around about here somewhere I forgot to put a marker in and as you can see I have made quite some progress on these mittens um, which I'm really pleased at and um <laughs> for the amount of time that I've spent on them they haven't probably grown as much as I would like um, but as I say the rows are just so slow I have to concentrate all the time um, working with all of these beautiful colours um, and I can't work on them for very long because the tight gauge starts to irritate my hands um, so yeah I am pleased with the work that I managed to put in on this project um, I almost got to the point where I'm starting to decrease for the top of the hand I didn't quite make it there I was hoping to um, I got to sort of frustration point with these so I thought right I'm going to put them away for a week and my original plan was to come back and work on them for the last week in February um, but just somehow I couldn't make myself do it so I have to settle for the progress that I've made um, and I'm hoping to um, not abandon these again and pick them up again um, throughout March um, but I'll chat more about my plans in another video um, I'll put up some March making thoughts um, on the channel soon I knew that for me a month is a long time to stick to working on one project every day um, so when I played my dice game I did roll a second um, sort of prompt card for that challenge and the second roll gave me the um, liberty to cast on a new project and just as I was um, reaching frustration point with the mitts um, I noticed over on Instagram that the lovely Ellie of Curio Stitches had put a shout out up for a test knit for an Aaron Waite hat design that's going to be released any day now I think um, so I decided to volunteer for that to test knit and I whipped up um, a wolf moon hat this is the wolf moon pattern um, this colour just does not want to show accurately anywhere um, it's either blowing out or just distorting all of the other things around it <laughs> Um, but this is a lovely sort of um, fresh spring green colour um, it's the pistachio colourway and this is the um, Starcraft special Aran weight yarn which is just a 100% acrylic yarn um, the original pattern was designed in an acrylic yarn and it's knit again on a fairly small needles um, for the weight of yarn um, and I picked out originally a pure wool yarn um, but it was a bit plumper um, than this um, acrylic Aran and I just thought after coming off of the back of the mittens where I was knitting at a tight gauge um, I decided to swap out my yarn plans and go with the Starcraft special um, to 
knit this hat and I think it turned out lovely. Um, it's a really easy quick knit um, with these lovely texture panels which just keep things um, interesting as you go up the hat. Um, I think I will be making some more of these in the future and I think because of the needle size that this um, hat is knit at um, I think it'll be a really flexible pattern and I'm pretty sure that if you use the same needles with a DK weight yarn um, you get a lovely fitting hat too. Um, so yeah that was the Wolf Moon hat um, which is a design coming soon from Curio Stitches. Sorry about the angle change maybe I just knocked managed to knock my tripod over. <laughs> Right, um, okay, so what else did I get up to in February? One of the projects that I picked out to work on was a pair of socks, and I am happy to say I have a finished pair of socks to share with you. Um, so I decided to work on the pair of socks that I started for our 12 cast ons make along, um, and these are a pair of socks made from my hand spun yarn um, from fibre that was gifted to me by my dear friend Caroline of Colourful Creativity. We did a swap over December for an advent swap and she gifted me lots of lovely fibre and I span that up through advent and I have finished a pair of socks and they turned out beautifully. They're sitting a bit baggy on the sock blockers because true to form I've been wearing these and I haven't washed them yet so yet again I am showing off my dirty socks here on the channel. <laughs> have you come to expect anything less now? Um, but yes, I've worn these a few times and they touch wood and all that, touch wood. Um, they seem to be wearing nicely. Um, I am experimenting here with my first um, sort of high twist two ply yarn. Um, so I'm not sure about the durability of these socks, um, but so far so good. And um, I decided to reverse the colours um, because I wasn't sure if I'd have a enough... Um, if I carried the colours through, I used a little bit more on the toe and a little bit more on the heel of a couple of colours. And I thought if I carried it through and used the same colours in the same order on both socks, I might run out of yarn. So I didn't think I'd have enough of this orange to knit like another heel in. Um, so yeah, I decided to um, get around that by um, reversing reversing the colours of the sock. Yeah, they turned out beautifully, they're really comfortable to wear. These colours are just so glorious. The fibre that Caroline sent was absolutely beautiful and I'm really glad to have um, finished these and been able to wear them. And I'm two for two, um, two months in and I have finished two of my 12 cast-ons, can you believe it? <laughs> I can't quite either but let's hope this is going to continue and by the end of the year my 12 are off the needles, we can but hope. <laughs> I've got two other projects to share with you for knitting. The dice prompted me to pick up one of my sweater projects and I chose my um, Aureli... I keep saying Aurelis, but I think it's Aurealis, but I can't, I always stumble over the pronunciation, but it's a pattern by Jen Steingas. I think it's Aurealis. Um, and I am knitting this from a combination of my hand spun for the colour work yoke and um, some beautiful yarn from Midwinter Yarns, black and blue. It's a Welsh produced yarn. And I have made quite some progress on this sweater this month. This was a project that my heart just wanted to work on. And in fact, um, one of the dice prompts that I rolled was to pick up a project um, and go with your heart. So um, in the end, I just continued to work on my um, Aurealis for probably more time than I originally intended, um, just because I, I want this. I want this sweater. I want to wear it. <laughs> so here we are. Um, I think I'm going to move the camera back slightly um, to try and get this um, in shot a little bit better. There we go, that makes it a little bit easier for me to hold up. So as you can see, I have finished the yoke and not only have I finished the yoke, but I am a good way, a good way into the body as well. Um, I think I've only got about an inch left before the pattern says to switch to ribbing, um, but I may extend the length a bit. Um, I've got a couple of sweaters that I absolutely love um, for their length. Um, so I think I'm going to lay one of these out and then lay this on top of it and match that length. Um, but just to remind you of how much work I've done on this, here is my marker, <laughs> which shows where I was at the beginning of February. Look at all that knitting. Yeah, I've been obsessed. Um, so the hand spun, um, I 
spun on my drop spindles and the fibre was actually a gift from the lovely Jeanette who I've already mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, she so kindly blended up some rainbow Rolags and sent them to me and um, I spun them up and I loved them so much um, that she sent me some more <laughs> and that meant I had enough for this beautiful yoke. Um, and this pattern um, was gifted to me by the lovely Terry. Hi Terry if you're watching. Um, and Terry specifically sent me this pattern after I spun up this yarn and said I think that yarn would look amazing in an Aurealis. So um, Terry you were absolutely right I am so in love with how this looks which sounds a little bit immodest because I always feel that way about using my hand spun yarn um, but sometimes patterns and yarns just work don't they and I think this is one of those cases um, so yeah I'm going to continue to crack on with this project um, I am obviously knitting round and round on the body now and I am using the um, helical knitting method to alternate skeins because this is a hand dyed yarn I love the depth of colour um, in this um, beautiful yarn. It's the Captain's Coat colourway um, in mid-winter yarns, black and blue yarn. Move you back in again. <laughs> um, I feel like my progress may slow down in March um, because it won't be long now before I'm on the dreaded Sleeve Island. Um, but we'll see. My stretch goal is to have that finished by the end of next month um so yeah that's a little spoiler for my March making plans video <laughs> and one other project that sort of snuck in at, at the end of February and this was thanks to the sock appeal that I've already chatted about my dear friend Charlie um of um Charlie Button Yarns and the um Cranky Lady um sent me a sock tube that she had cranked out on her um, circular sock machine and I decided to um, turn that tube into a pair of socks for me and another pair of socks to gift to the um, WMAS sock appeal and that is just what I'm in the middle of doing um, so I'm happy to say I have finished the pair of socks for me um, so this beautiful yarn um, was a King Cole um, Happy Feet with bamboo I think it was called um, and it's this beautiful striped um, combination of greys and oranges and I used the leftovers of my onion yarn um, nettle sock yarn for this um, which I recently knit my sleepover socks in and I think this orange just goes so well with the orange in the um, king coal yarn um, so yeah I have completely finished um, this pair of socks that I shall be keeping to keep my feet snugly and warm and I am undertaking um, turning the rest of the tube um, into another pair of socks to gift to the um, sock appeal. So I, the, with what was left of the tube, I have used the remainder of my um, nettle yarn to knit cuffs. So I've got no more of this yarn left. And um, I am going to pick a grey from my stash um, to add the toes and the heels to this pair and if you can see clacking around here I have inserted my um, two pairs of needles um, I basically um, folded this tube in half um, and then threaded my needles through and I'm going to snip um, the stitches here to separate this tube into two socks and I'll be adding my toes and then I'll go back and put in some heels on this tube soon. That's everything for my knitting in February. Um, let's move on to crochet. Um, now for crochet I sadly have a little bit of a tale of woe. Um, so for crochet I decided to work on the basket that I started as my as one of my 12 cast-ons projects. A little bit sad about this project because I really am loving how it's turning out. Um, so I'm using again some of my hand spun yarn um, to make this basket. Um, I started with this natural colour on the bottom and I um, went into this sort of grey colour um, for the first stripe on the side of this. Um, however, I have decided that I will be frogging this project. Um, it seems like every year at least one of my 12 cast-ons um, ends up getting frogged. I think every year one of them has ended up not making it. And this year, sadly, it's going to be the basket project. Um, not because I don't like how it's looking or how it's turning out. I really do like it. Um, but it's just too hard on my hands. Um, to give this basket a sort of somewhat more structured 
um, side. This yarn isn't really thick enough for a um, sort of proper structured side for my basket. Um, but to give that structure, instead of working through the crochet stitch as you usually do, um, you kind of work into the um, sort of V section of the stitch. Um, it's probably not really making any sense. Um, but with this yarn, which is slightly thick and thin anyway, and working at the gauge that I'm working at, um, I'm just, I'm finding it too hard on my hands. Um, I struggle with crochet anyway, um, just because my crochet action irritates my wrist. And I was working away on this and it took me several evenings just to do these few rounds. Um, my wrist was starting to hurt and obviously <laughs> on top of that I was working on a couple of other tight attention projects and I just decided it's just it's just not worth it um, I want to be able to knit and crochet for many years to come um, so unfortunately as much as I think this basket would have been absolutely lovely I was going to use it as a project basket I'm going to be ripping this out now I've shown you and I shall be setting this yarn aside for another project in the future sadly my crochet project is a tale of woe this month but hey not everything works out and I'm okay with that um, I'd rather um, start again and rethink that project than um, push on with a project that is bringing me um, discomfort in my hands on to spinning sorry another interruption the door went as I was recording so video of interruptions but that's fine just means I have more editing to do at the end <laughs> <laughs> right spinning I have quite a few finished skeins to share with you this um, month um, I think in part thanks to the fact that some of these were almost finished um, as we went into the start of the month but um, nonetheless um, I've got a few things to share so let's get on with it um, so first off um, I have been working on my um, fleece spin um, so last year I got a Jacob Ryland cross fleece and I um, washed and prepared all of that fleece up into Rolags and I've been spinning through it and I finished spinning a second bobbin um, last month and I've started plying up that yarn so I have one finished skein of yarn and I'm busy plying away I still have more left on the bobbins to ply um, so um, it's this beautiful kind of natural brown grey um, kind of colour and um, I'm so close to the end of this spin now um, once I've finished plying what's on the bobbins I think I've got um, one more bobbin to fill and then the row lags will be done so I didn't quite manage to meet my goal of getting this finished by the end of February um, but that's okay um, good progress has been made oh, I smell so sheepy and good <laughs> and then I've got to try and come up with a plan for what to do with this yarn um yeah let's not get distracted by thinking about that right now we don't need to think about it um one more skein done on my fleece spin and then I have woo two um beauties to share with you um so the first one um is this beautiful um DK weight um, three ply yarn um, and I spun this from a braid of merino fibre that was a wonderful gift from my dear friends Andy and Angela at Attic Spin Dye and this was one of the spins off of my spinning cart as you can see it's still pretty full <laughs> um, but I did something a bit different with this fibre. Um, I split the fibre down and I tried to make myself a gradient. Um, so this yarn goes from dark brown um, through to this sort of greeny brown. And I have a video coming up on the channel soon um, where I'm chatting in depth about my decision making process for this spin and taking you through from the braid of fibre through to the finished yarn. So I won't spend too much time um, chatting about this one now. Um, other than just to wave it at the camera and show it off um, but for anyone who is interested in um, spinning in a little bit more detail there'll be a video coming up about that soon the second one um, is also going to be part of a vlog coming up soon um, so again I won't chat too much about it um, for now because there'll be more coming um, but this is um, some naturally dyed fibre um, some blue face Leicester um, which was a fibre club box from Nellie and Eve who are based here in Wales and again I chain plied this yarn for a three ply and I already know exactly what I'm going to knit with this um, I'm not going to say any more <laughs> Uh, because I'm going to save that for the vlog that's coming up about this spin. Um, I've got loads of spinning footage that is partly edited and partly waiting to um, 
be uploaded and some of it's waiting to be finished so um, as in I've got more bits to record um, so for the spinners out there who love the spinning content um, there should be plenty for you coming up soon um, but yes um, some lovely natural dyed fibre from Nelly and Eve so this is a sort of DK2 worsted weight yarn um, sorry again for any camera changes I'm not having the best of luck with this video um, my camera cut out <laughs> Ah, oh, this is going to be a bit of a mess, but hey, it's going up anyway. Otherwise, um, this won't get recorded. I don't have time to do it again. <laughs> uh, so yes, Nelly and Eve uh, Blue Face Lester Fibre done. Um, and then the final project that I have to show you, um, I spun completely on my supported spindles. Um, I have two support spindles, um, which I purchased from the lovely spindle maker here in the UK, Enid Ashcroft. And I set myself a little goal throughout January and February to um, spin on the supported spindles um, every day, a little bit every day to try and improve my spinning skills. And I was working with um, some more Cambrian fibre from Hilltop Cloud. Um, and it's a Welsh produced fibre, Welsh mule. And this was one of the um, gradient packs again. This was a seasonal pack, so a limited edition pack um, in these beautiful um, sort of muted um, kind of sludgy kind of colours um, from a sort of pink. There's these sort of grey blues, brown and this um, gorgeous um, sort of goldy mustard colour. Um, so I managed to spin all of the singles on my um, supported spindle um, and I plied this on my e-spinner just for a two ply. Uh, this is not my most consistent yarn because as I say, it's a bit of a spin practice really for me on my supported spindles um, but it has turned out lovely nonetheless. It's quite nice and soft and there's a sort of quite nice drape to it. Um, so yeah, I've ended up with these five mini skeins and then I have this little hybrid skein um, with all of the leftover bits on. Um, I'm contemplating um, gifting this yarn to a friend. Um, actually, I'll ask you the question. Gifted some of my hand spun before, um, but I'm a bit more reticent about gifting this one because it's not the most consistent. Um, but I do feel like um, one of my lovely friends might really enjoy these colours um so part of me really wants to gift it but I sort of feel a bit oh should I gift what is essentially a practice spin um and not the most consistent um let me just show you so there's some bits like this that are quite thin and then there's other bits oh, that's not a really good indicator believe me <laughs> there are some bits that are really thin and some bits that are thicker um so let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts um would you just love to receive a hand spun gift from a friend regardless of whether it's um super consistent or not i mean a hand spun is never going to be perfectly consistent um but this is more inconsistent than um kind of like my current standard of spinning i guess do you just enjoy the fact of being gifted some hand spun yarn or if um someone sent you some hand spun that was not the most consistent would you struggle maybe to decide what to use it for i'm still on the fence about whether to keep that one i'm, I'm pretty sure it will knit up fine um but yeah it's just not my current sort of standard of consistency right that is everything for my making for february we reached the end yay i feel like it was quite a long one um, i guess that's the trade-off of doing these monthly roundups rather than a weekly chatter um, about what i'm making is the videos might be slightly longer but um i am enjoying um doing these monthly videos and then posting a little bit more variety in between rather than doing a sit down weekly chat um but yeah if you've got any strong feelings about which sort of format you prefer um then please do let me know in the comments um obviously my favorite thing about making these videos is the community aspect i really do want to try and make content that you will hopefully enjoy <laughs> Right, I am going to sign off for today. I'm going to be back shortly, so I hope you will join me again for the next video. I have got videos planned for my monthly making plans. Um, I've got my um, reading wrap up to do. Um, I thought I might do a journal flip through because we're now um, starting March. And I thought um, for those of you who are interested in the journaling content, you might like to see what my journal is looking like after two months of me working in it. Um, I've got plenty of spinning videos that I could spliced together um, as I was sorting out my phone the other day um, I found some footage that I hadn't shared of this fleece from last summer and me unboxing the three other fleeces that I own <laughs> 
Um, I also purchased a new type of um, spindle, um, a new style to me, a new to me style of support spindle. Um, so I thought I might make a video of me spinning on that for the first time. And I do have a knitting vlog planned as well, although that might be um, something that comes up um, in a couple of months rather than this month. So plenty of stuff going on here on the channel. Yes, I hope you will join me for the next video. But until we get to spend time together again, I hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy. Great big woolly hugs to you all. Bye for now.